In this video, we're going to be taking a look at dividing decimals. Now you'll need to get out your Go Math book, your math journal, and a pencil, and you can turn to page 126 in your Go Math book. Now we're going to be taking a look at dividing decimals, and the essential question is how do you divide decimals? Pretty obvious there, right? So we're going to take a look at dividing decimals by whole numbers. Now, again, whenever we're working with decimals, division does not mean it's any different at all. Even the steps with division does not mean it's any different at all. It just happens to have a little nice innocent dot there, or a decimal, whatever you like to call it, and right in there with the dividend. But understand that 4 divided by 2 still equals 2 if there's a decimal in the problem. So something that is very important at the top, you can see right here, dividing decimals is similar to dividing whole numbers. When you divide a decimal by a whole number, the placement of the decimal point in the quotient is determined by the placement of the decimal in the dividend. Understand, the dividend is that number that is in the division house. The quotient is your answer. Remember, the number on the outside of the house is that divisor. So, taking a look at this problem, it says a high school track is 9 and 76 hundredths meters wide. It is divided into eight lanes of equal width for track and field events. How wide is each lane? So you can see we have 9 and 76 hundredths divided by 8. And you can see the steps that are taken in this book. On, in your Go Math book on page 126, you can see the decimal point is just moved up in a division problem like this. It's kind of opposite with subtraction with decimals and adding with decimals the decimals move down to the answer this is moved up to the quotient so you can see the division is all still the same we still divide multiply subtract check bring down remember does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers those steps still apply we'll take a look at them in just a little bit but they still apply with that so we can see the answer 1 and 22 hundredths, so we can see that each lane is 1 and 22 hundredths meters wide. Take a look at the next one. Next problem, we have $153.86 for 14 sessions. You can see 153, that decimal point is right there with money as well, separating dollars and cents. You can see the decimal point is moved up to the quotient, and for an answer of $10.99. Now, let's take a look at checking your answer for reasonableness. And then we'll take a look at some steps of dividing together. So we can see, how can you estimate to check that your quotient in question A is reasonable? So what we can do, we can round 9 76 hundredths to 10, and then we can divide by 8. So since 8 goes into 10 once with a small remainder, we know that 1 in 22 hundredths is reasonable. So if we had a problem where 8 went, went into 100 and you know we divide, we rounded everything and, the, and then the answer was like 25, we could know that answer is not reasonable. You're not going to get an exact answer, but we know um, it can be pretty close here. So let's take a look at number 3. I want you to get out your math journal and let's write this down and let's do this problem together. Okay, so let's write this down. 9 and 75 hundredths divided by 5. Understand that the dividend goes into the house, or you can even think of it this way, the dividend runs into a dead end in our division house. The divisor is on the outside. So my first step, what I can do, is I'm going to take that decimal and move it up. All right, move it up into the answer. And then now that I've done that, I can divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. I'll follow those steps just like I normally would. So keep in mind, I can go by the saying or by the phrase does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers so I do my division 5 into 9 goes 1 time 1 times 5 is 5 I multiply now I subtract 9 minus 5 gives me 4 I check my difference or my answer in my subtraction problem if it's less than my divisor I can bring down if it's greater I need to check my answer in my quotient so it's less than, so I can bring down my next number. So I have 47. Use a different color of ink for this next group. So now I'm going to divide again. I brought down, I'm going to go back up to dividing. So I divide 47 divided by 5 is going to give me, most amount of times 5 can go into 47 is 9 times. 9 times 5, 45. I subtract. 
I have 2. I can check it. 2 is less than 5, so I can bring down, so since it's less than 5, I can bring down my next number. 5 there, use a different color of ink for this step. I can go with purple, so I can start dividing. 5 into 25 goes 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. I multiply. I subtract for my next step. I have 0 for my answer. I can check it. That's less than 5. No, there aren't any other numbers to bring down. So my answer is 1 and 95 hundredths for number 3. Now what I want you to do is to complete number 4 all by yourself. And you can work on that now. Okay, the answer you should have had for number 4 is 92 hundredths. Let's take a look now at page 127. You can turn there in your Go Math book. Okay, now we're going to take a look at dividing a decimal by a decimal, which will which can be a little tricky. There's one extra, or there's a couple extra steps that you'll have to do, but then after that you can just start dividing like you normally would. Now this is very important at the top. And we'll take a look at 5 and 6 on this page to see this. Um, in action. So it says when dividing a decimal by a decimal, the first thing you need to do is change the divisor to a whole number by multiplying by a power of 10, then multiply the dividend by the same power of 10. So it's important, whatever you do to the divisor, you must do to the dividend. You have to make that divisor a whole number. And then whatever you do to that divisor to make it a whole number, you need to do to the dividend. So we can see however many places to the right you move that decimal for the divisor remember that's multiplying by a power of 10 that's how many places to the right you have to move the decimal for your dividend as well so if you have to move it two places in your divisor you have to move it two places for your dividend one place in your divisor to the right one place in your div dividend 87 places to the right in your divisor the decimal moves 87 places to the right and your dividend that it will move. So let's take a look at number 5. You can see some of those examples for A and B, but let's work on number 5 together. We'll do both 5 and 6 together in the video. So let's write out 4 and 25 hundredths divided by 5 tenths. So because this is a de decimal dividing by a decimal, remember I have to multiply by, by a power of 10 to get this divisor to a whole number. So what I'm going to do is multiply 5 tenths by 10, which means I'm going to move that decimal one place to the right, making it 5. It's a whole number now. So because I did that, what I have to do is move the decimal to the right and my dividend as well. So instead of 4 and 25 hundredths, now it's 42 and 5 tenths. Now that I've moved my decimal one place to the right, because I moved it one place to the right for my divisor, I can start dividing like I normally know how to do. Remember, divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. So 5 into 42, most amount of times without going over is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. So I multiply. Now it's time to subtract. That's my next step. 42 minus 40 is 2. I check. Is 2 less than 5? Yes, it is. So I'm going to bring down that next number in my dividend. I can start dividing again. 5 into 25 goes 5 times without going over. Multiply 5 times 5 is 25. I can subtract, which is 0. I can check. 0 is less than 5. There aren't any other numbers to bring down. So I have an answer of 8 and 5 tenths. So let's take a look at the next problem, number 6 on page 127. I want you to write this down. We're going to write 0 and 84 hundredths divided by 15 and 12 hundredths. Remember that tip that I gave you, and it's on the top of page 127? You need to first change the divisor to a whole number by multiplying by a power of 10. Remember, power of 10s, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and so on. And then you have to multiply the same um, power of 10 to the dividend as well. So in simpler terms, what we could say, however many places you move that decimal to the right, 
with your divisor. You can see I'm moving it two places to the right to make it a whole number. That's how many places to the right you need to move that decimal with your dividend as well. So I'm going to put that decimal, you can even put it right up here. And now I have my divisor a whole number. It is a whole number. Now I can start looking at um, dividing with my steps. Divide, multiply, subtract check bring down now I have 84 into 151 the most amount of times without going over let's say for example I say it's 2 I multiply that that's 168 you can see 168 is greater than the number in my dividend so because of that I have to decrease my number in my quotient so if 2 is too big I'm gonna try 1 1 times 84, so I multiply. Remember the first number of your multiplication answer goes right in line with the number you put in your quotient. So I cannot take 4 away from 1. I need to regroup, change that 5 into a 4, and I can bring it over. 11 minus 4 is 7, and then I can see 14 minus 8 is 6. And remember, I want you to do this with me as well. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I've subtracted, now it's time to check. 867 is less than 84, so because of that we can bring down. Alright, now we have 672, and we have the most amount of times 84 can go into 672, it's 8 times. Then we multiply 84 times 8, and that is 672. We can subtract. We don't have anything left over. You can see zero is obviously left than, less than 84. We have a decimal there, but that's okay. Um, we still have our answer of 18. So what I want you to do is number six on your own. Understand a problem like this, 23 and 85 hundredths divided by 9. That first number is the dividend, which goes into the division house. That second number is the, the divisor. So 23 and 85 hundredths divided by 9. You can work on that now. So you can see for number 6, our answer is 2 and 65 hundredths. Now what I would like you to do is work on number 7, and you can do that now. So for number 7, the answer is 33 and 16 hundredths. Now let's take a look at number 21, the essential check-in. When you are dividing two decimals, how can you check whether you have divided the decimals correctly. So just a quick way to understand this, you can multiply the divisor by the quotient, and the product should match the dividend. So that's a way to just to check what you're doing. So this concludes the video on dividing decimals. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.